Welcome to our next lecture. Uh, our speaker is uh, Tao Gai, uh, who is very interested and has done a lot of research on the verifica on verification, formal verification, and in particular formal verification of hybrid systems. And she has been very uh, involved in a system that uh, several of us are familiar with, SpaceX. That was already mentioned uh, at least once today. So. Uh, um, Oh, and of course, uh, uh, Tao is uh, Directeur de Recherche at uh, Verimag in Grenoble. So without further ado, welcome, Tao. Thank you very much for uh, the invitation and the introduction. So yeah, I would like to um, uh, acknowledge my uh, employer, CNRS, because normally when I put my name in the papers, and if I forget the CNRS, then they will not be happy. So they, they have some formal instruction that we need to put the CNRS every time we have publication. So, um, so this, uh, the talk uh, of my, uh, the topic of my uh, uh, three lectures of this semester, uh, of this uh, uh, um, week, is about uh, the validation of cyber physical system. And especially, I would like to, uh, to do from this direction, is uh, from formal to semi-formal. So it's a, uh, uh, it's not to say that uh, we, we don't want to be formal. It's to say that sometimes formal is not expensive and it's not feasible. Then it's uh, a good way to uh, like handle the complexity of formal verification is to provide some semi-formal validation methods. And, uh, uh, and then I will um, uh, um, divide my... Um, uh, into three parts. So in the first lecture, I will uh, start with the formal, a formal approach. So then I will say that only is, this is only one formal way for uh, doing uh, verification of uh, cyber physical system. And especially I will use the hybrid system as my uh, mathematical model for a cyber physical system. And here in this talk, it's only one direction how to perform formal verification. And I would address uh, what is uh, uh, important ingredient in the, for in the verification algorithm uh, is how to have a good set representation for handling the uh, um, uncertainty in hardware system. And in, in the second lecture, I will talk about a, a semi-formal approach. So then now we move from verification to testing. And especially, uh, we, would, we don't want to do testing like uh, in the current practice in industry. We want testing with some f quantitative guarantees. For example, we would like to say that, OK, we test the system, we run the system a finite number of simulation. We cannot reveal any bugs, but we can say that, OK, with such number of simulation, I guarantee the some degree of the correctness of the system. And uh, in the third lecture, I would um, talk about a related problem, especially they are very much related to the uh, way of handling set uh, of trajectories in hybrid system, is to do uh, control and parameter synthesis. And especially I would illustrate this uh, uh, approach with uh, uh, one application to uh, biological modeling. So we we'll say that biological modeling is not so much uh, close to um, cyber physical system. But in fact, this uh, domain shows all the challenges in the uh, uh, validation and uh, uh, synthesis of a cyber physical system. And also, for example, we can say that in many applications of uh, cyber physical system, we have this uh, physical part, which is close, uh, closely related to the uh, biological um, uh, system, for example, in medical devices, that we need to model the um, behaviors of, for example, patients of uh, humans. So uh, now I will uh, start with the first lecture. So it's a, it's a, uh, it's about a set of rep representation for handling a verification of two types of properties of hybrid system. Here, uh, it's the invariance and stability properties. So um, 
in fact, I expected uh, Erika to uh, <laughs> give a talk before me and give all the material <laughs> for the like um, to to avoid uh, some definitions. But I think that we can go with this. Is the so uh, here, uh, this is uh, basically this the, the this the results of this uh, uh, work. Uh, were obtained uh, within uh, the PhD thesis of my student who uh, just defended in uh, two, two weeks ago. It's uh, about, uh, so um, now I would uh, like to uh, motivate why we need a good set representation for formal verification of hybrid system. So hybrid system here, I mean uh, the a complex dynamics uh, that uh, combines different types of dynamics. For example, we can have discrete uh, and continuous dynamics, discrete uh, uh, represented by difference equations, continuous time dynamics uh, represented by differential equations. We can have discrete time, we can have uh, continuous time, dense time, and uh, they are basically can be specified using different formalism. For example, in cyber physical system, you can have different types of uh, models. For example, you can have differential equations like in some mathematical uh, formalism, or you can have some dynamical system uh, uh, specified using uh, some high level uh, programming languages like uh, Simulink, for example. So then here by hybrid system, I mean a mathematical formalism to uh, address a large class of embedded and uh, cyber physical system. And one particular point of a uh, cyber physical system is that we have uncertainty. So uncertainty here, I means that for example, it can be used for different uh, purposes. For example, uncertainty can be some uh, uh, something physical from the environment. For example, when our system operates in some environment that we cannot uh, uh, know beforehand the changes in the environment, the changes in the configurations. The, so that is kind of like external uncertainty. But we can have also uncertainty inside the system. For example, when we don't want to uh, give a detailed description of the system, we don't want or we cannot. So for example, we lack knowledge about the system or there are some part of the dynamics that we don't want to model, we cannot model, for example. So then because of these uh, uncertainties in the system, then when starting from even a fixed initial condition, so under all possible perturba perturbations or uh, external inputs, then the system generates a set of executions instead of one single ex execution. And then that's why we uh, need to handle set of executions of the system. So, and then, then here we will see that the questions that why we need to handle all this uh, symbolic representation of set informal verification. And, um, and then uh, in this talk, I will uh, um, uh, present uh, uh, one particular set uh, representation. There are many, and I will also give a brief review of the existing uh, set representation. And uh, basically, the idea is that we will start with a very, uh, it's a pretty, it uh, has uh, be uh, become a popular set representation, which is zonotope. And then we move from usual zonotope to complex zonotope, and then from complex zonotope to handle some challenges in the verification of hybrid system. We move to some another uh, type, which is template complex zonotope, is for accuracy of approximation. We'll see why we move from usual zonotope to complex zonotope is for uh, handling stability, to how to capture the Aiken structure of the dynamics. And uh, from templates complex zonotope is uh, for, uh, for accuracy of appro approximation. We move to a more <coughs> Uh, mm, uh, co complicated uh, set representation, which is augmented complex zonotope, is to handle discrete transition and all the uh, intersection operations uh, for sets. So I will also illustrate the uh, this set representation for two problems. So one problem is the stability 
verification of uh, networked control system and the second is the verification of uh, uh, invariance properties. So here in this uh, uh, talk we address uh, two uh, uh, types of uh, uh, properties which uh, I think are not very common so far in the verification of hybrid system. In the verification of hybrid system so far we uh, address only safety properties and here we will have something uh, that which is, um, uh, which is more uh, uh, dynamical, more um, uh, used in the context of uh, um, verification uh, of the control design. So now uh, here is the sum, uh, a simple description of the hybrid dynamics uh, that I would like to address in this uh, uh, talk. So for example, we can have like a, here we illustrate the combination of different types of dynamics. For example, we can have continuous dynamics, like you have differential, here you have difference equations, and have differential equations here. And then we can have discrete jumps between the different continuous modes. So we call it discrete states. Discrete states like modes and we can change between the discrete modes. And also we can, within the continuous dynamics, we can still have jumps in the continuous uh, state. <coughs> For example, in the application, we have a number of applications, very natural applications like gear control uh, in a car. Or you can, ha now m moving to more like cyber physical applications, then we can have computer controlled system, like we have computers, uh, which is uh, more uh, discrete and uh, we have a physical system uh, more continuous. So uh, just one slide to uh, uh, illustrate the complexity of the verification problem for hybrid system. Is that, for example, we would like to compute the reachable sets. So in the talk of Taylor, we have already uh, definitions of reachable uh, sets. So here is that the idea is that for a given dynamical system. Uh, for example, here we have uh, some simple affined switch system. That means that we have a different uh, uh, modes. Each mode is uh, represented by a linear uh, dynamics matrix uh, A AI. And uh, we have here uh, discrete time, very simple. And then if we start, so here we have only two, syst two systems. If we start with some initial uh, set, that means that a set um, that captures the uncertainty in the initial conditions. Then we, if we apply the first dynamics, we have suppose that here is a linear system and we have the convex set from, uh, um, at the start, then we will have the two con uh, convex sets in the next iterations applying two dynamics. And then we continue, so then we see that this is complex. and. We have here at each step by one dynamic, we have a convex set, but then we have a union of convex sets. So how to handle all these uh, uh, sets generated by the process of applying the dynamics uh, and continuous dynamic and uh, discrete dynamics. So set representations for verification. So now we, need, we know that, okay, we, ha we need to handle sets set of states, set of uh, executions, so set of signals. And here, for example, uh, we would like to have a good set representations for an efficient verification algorithm. And this set, so as I said before, that we need this, this set to handle non-determinism in the dynamics, okay? So, and if we here, by set representation, uh, representation, I mean some uh, computer encoding uh, of a, a set of uh, possibly infinite uh, number of states. So for example, here we have a, a symbolic uh, representation, for example, of uh, using the ellipsoids or using polytopes or uh, here, for example, two types of uh, like well-known uh, set representations. We have polytopes, so described by 
uh, um, uh, um, linear inequalities. For example, here you have the matrix T, and then so the uh, polytope is defined by all the points satisfying these inequalities, linear inequalities. And then we have also uh, um, another popular set representation, which is this ellipsoid. So then we have here some matrix and quadratic uh, constraints to define the set. So now the requirement for a good set representation is that we need to be able to manipulate this set representation, especially for the, all the operations arising in the verification algorithm for a uh, hybrid system. For example, typical uh, operations, we can see that you have linear transformations. For example, when we want to apply uh, some linear uh, dynamics in discrete times. Or we need Minkowski sum. Minkowski sum is to handle input disturbances in the system that, for example, we can see here intuitively, for example, the system without uh, disturbance, then we will have some set. Now, we, in order to uh, handle, to, to, like, uh, to, to um, capture all possible deviations caused by the disturbances, then we need the Minkowski sum is like a bloating, the making larger to include all the possible deviations. And then we also have, like, uh, this is the typical uh, operation needed for handling simple switching dynamics, switching on a hyperplane, for example, or uh, we have a, a, a guard and they're represented by some half spaces, and then we will need to uh, make the intersection with the, uh, the guards in order to determine the, the states from which the system can start a new uh, uh, continuous mode. So. So then uh, we have here, what is important is that we need the closure of the set representation under the, the required operations. It's not always possible, but we want as much as possible. So for example, because when we have the closure, the all the like membership operation would be more efficient. And also, of course, we want something very efficient, low complexity for uh, manipulation uh, performing uh, the operations. So now my, uh, that is the kind of like introduction for the uh, need of a good set representation in the verification algorithm. And there are many so far, and I would like uh, to talk about a particular uh, a set, uh, recent, quite recent uh, set representation, which is complex on the top. So complex here we mean uh, complex valued in the, the a complex zonotope represented by complex valued coefficients. We, we will deta detail that uh, in the next slides. And so the idea is that from, uh, we move from usual, so real valued zonotope to complex valued zonotopes in order to capture the Aiken structure of the system, which is very important for the stability properties. So now, uh, some recall uh, uh, about uh, usual zonotopes. Usual, I mean real valued uh, zonotopes. So zonotopes, uh, one definition, one possible definition of zonotope is a projection of higher dimensional hypercube onto lower dimensional space. Okay, so. Or if we want more algebraic definition, then we, we have a, a, a zonotope is defined by a set of generators and a center. So here everything is in um, reals. So then we have uh, the matrix here. So we have a, a number of generators, vectors. So it's uh, intuitively, they specify the direction of the uh, zonotopes. And then we have the coefficient. The coefficient will take uh, any values between minus one and one. And here we have the center. Center, for example, we have the center around here. And then we have this example to say that we have different uh, directions. And uh, this will define, for example, this vector will define this, uh, this uh, uh, phases. So for uh, why we, we uh, the uh, usual zonotopes uh, 
uh, has been quite popular in the uh, verification of hybrid system because it can perform, uh, we can perform the uh, um, important operations very efficiently on zonotopes. For example, linear transformation, also Minkowski sum, and that's why this is the uh, we um, the, the the advantages of uh, zonotopes over polytopes and ellipsoids. So let let me show this. Okay, so uh, in order to uh, apply linear transformation, simply we apply linear transformation to the generators and to the center. And Minkowski sum, it, we collect all the generators. So the, all the operations are quite uh, uh, algebraic. We can stay with the ma algebraic mani manipulation of the, um, of the uh, four important uh, operations. So now drawback of zonotopes for computing uh, positive invariance. So le let me uh, now first uh, describe the main idea of uh, positive invariance. So positive invariance is that, for example, you have a set, and we say that this set is positive invariance, is that the next reachable set from this set is included in the set. So that means that given a set, we apply the dynamics, then it's intuitively you say that it converged. So uh, if we have a linear dynamics, stable for example, so then for example to judge the stability of stable uh, 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 linear system, it's very uh, simple that we look at the Eigen structures, we look at Eigen values. So then we would like to uh, exploit this result for uh, the case of uh, positive invariance. So for example here, if our system, our linear system has only real eigenvectors, SG eigenvectors, then we can collect all these uh, eigenvectors to define our zonotopes and then we know that the system will contract. The zonotope will contract because we define uh, along the uh, eigenvectors which of a, a stable system. So that is only uh, valid when we have linear system with real eigenvectors. In case that we have complex eigenvectors, then we cannot use, we cannot exploit uh, this result. That's why we want to move from usual zonotope to complex zonotopes in order to be able to capture the uh, complex uh, eigenvectors. So now we have this uh, complex uh, zonotope, which is uh, a new set uh, representation that we introduce, especially with the uh, motivation to uh, capture the Eigen structure of uh, linear dynamics. So the idea is uh, very simple. That means that we have the same algebraic definition of the usual zonotopes. Now we replaced some uh, uh, elements in there from the real domain to complex domain. So for example, here we have this new definition of uh, complex zonotope is that we have this uh, complex zonotope with the set of generators. So the generators can be in comp complex uh, domain, also the center. So then the definition is simply as before, but now instead of taking the coefficient as the in the interval minus one to one, now we will take the norm and we let the norm to be one, uh, smaller than one. So then, now this, uh, uh, this is the algebraic definition, but the geometric uh, uh, intuition behind this uh, definition is that, for example, we have, uh, let's take uh, uh, three uh, eigenvectors, so two complex and one real. So then we will see that, in fact, the two complex eigenvectors define ellipsoids, ellipse, ellipses. In fact, it's a two-dimensional, it's a projection. And then we have this eigen, uh, real eigenvectors will define line segment. And then we will make the Minkowski sum of them. So then the result will be something which is convex. It's like convex, it could be smooth, 
and it's uh, so that's why it's no longer uh, um, uh, 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 it, uh, it, it's more general than zonotopes and um, ellipsoids. So here we have this uh, after uh, making the Minkowski sum of the uh, three uh, set here. So we have this uh, this uh, uh, illustrations, the projection of the resulting set on the uh, two-dimensional projections. So here we can say that complex zonotope is simply the Minkowski sum of light segments and ellipses. So now, uh, that is how we can now uh, directly apply the result on the stability of linear dynamics for zonotopes to, in order to, to, uh, to um, uh, detect the contraction of the uh, zonotope under some linear dynamics. So let's say if A, the matrix A is stable dynamics that we have eigenvalues complex, then we use the eigenvalues and eigenvectors to define the zonotopes. So let's say that now we will take, because we will consider linear dynamics, we will take the, uh, the origin as the center. And then we can say that if this matrix is uh, linear, then if we apply the linear dynamics on these zonotopes, complex zonotope, then this, uh, this the result will be a contraction. That means that it's included in the original uh, complex zonotope. So uh, that says that uh, I I will now move to uh, uh, description of some uh, I basic operations on complex zonotope, and then also I will illustrate the um, the, the uh, how we can do the inclusion checking between the two zonotopes, two complex zonotopes um, that we can use the complex. Uh, Programming to solve the uh, inclusion checking. So now uh, we will have here so here now we will uh, move to uh, an, a, a new set of the from usual zonotope we move to complex zonotopes, and now we move to template complex zonotope. So the, the reason is that we want to have more, uh, a better uh, approximation results. So the idea is that now, instead, now just look at the definition. So here is the template complex zonotope. We have the, the matrix of generators. We have the center, and now we have a coefficient, which is we call scaling factors. So the scaling factors would allow us to uh, to play on the effect of each, the contribution of each generator to the final result. For example, here just uh, illustrates how uh, uh, this template complex zonotope would allow more flexibility in the set description, for example. So suppose that we have these complex zonotopes, the usual complex zonotopes. Now we will, if we want to add like for example, if we want to define the approximation along some direction, then we will add more generators, more directions in that, uh, in order to, to have better approximation along some direction. So suppose that then we add this W. And then if we then add this W, so at the same time, because it's the, uh, because of symmetry, then we will need to bloat on the other side of the direction. So then that's what we don't want. We want now to add these scaling factors in order to be able to have more flexibility in the directions of approximation. Okay, so that's why we call it template. So at this, instead of here, we just need to this to have these uh, scaling factors, and then we require the scaling, the uh, <coughs> combining coefficients to be smaller in norm uh, compared to the scaling. Factors. So now some basic uh, operations on the 
uh, template complex only that is in fact it's the same the operations the, the are the same for the original uh, complex only those so it's a uh, pretty simple for the uh, uh, operations like linear transformation if you apply the linear transformation to this a template complex zonotope that simply we apply to the generators to the center. And then Minkowski sum is the same, we collect the generators and we make the sum of the centers and then we collect the scaling factors. So now checking the inclusions. So uh, do you, how much time do I have to see? Oh, 10 minutes. Okay, so I think that I will need to accelerate. <laughs> okay, so maybe this all this thing is the... Okay, so basically to say that checking inclusion between two complex zonotopes, finally, it's a, normally it's a non-convex optimization. If we ju just write out all the, because it's a very algebraic uh, uh, manipulation, we write down all the conditions. However, and this is a, a, a non-convex optimization is, uh, is uh, expensive, so then we propose a, a, a relaxed versions of inclusion. So that will be able to transform the non-convex optimization problem into the second order conic constraints uh, 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 optimization. So now let me uh, illustrate some perhaps uh, only in intuition on uh, some interesting operations. For example, now inter intersection between complex and the so intersection between complex zonotopes, we will say that, OK, the, if they just take two zonotopes with the same generators, that means the same directions, the same forms. And then we want to make the intersection, normally with the, some template. For example, a template the polytopes, this operation is extremely easy. But, but for the complex zonotope, if we do just take the mean of the scaling factor, it, it's not it's not uh, valid all the time. It's not true all the time. For example, we see that if the template is not invertible, then for example here in that case, if we want to, to take the uh, uh, intersection between these two zonotopes, then we'll have something smaller. Small, much smaller than if we just take the mean of the scaling factor. But however, for the invertible template, then that means that the matrix of the generators is then we is uh, the we can take the the mean of the scaling factor to define the intersection. So now I would uh, just to make uh, some uh, comparison in terms of uh, set representation. For example, so far I uh, I don't uh, it's not an exhaustive uh, list of uh, set uh, uh, representations that uh, exist. So we have here, for example, uh, convex poly polytopes defined by constraints. The H representation. So then we uh, have zonotope, ellipsoid, polynomial, sublevel set, and template complex zonotope. So we have here the advantages and drawbacks for the a number of operations. Linear transformation. So it's, uh, this is efficient only for invertible matrices. If it's not invertible, then all the algorithms that are transforming into the vertices from the constraints can be very expensive. And also for zonotope efficient, efficient ellipsoid efficient, and for polynomial sublevel set, it's uh, uh, more than exponential uh, complexity. Now, now what is in interesting here is that the existence of positive invariance if we use this set of representations. So for example, with zonotope, this may not exist. So that means that when we have a zonotope, we apply the dynamics. We may not find a zonotopic positive invariant, okay? so because each time we apply the dynamics, the intuition is that the, the, the set will change. And we need to find, an, again, a zonotope that is invariant then may not be uh, uh, possible. And then for ellipsoid, it's possible, and uh, we can have the efficient uh, encoding. So, uh, Perhaps I will just go to the application. And uh, so we have uh, now we can see that uh, the, the three uh, things in the list. First of all, is the uh, usual zonotope, 
complex and the type of complex and the augmented co complex and the augmented here is in fact is we want to uh, handle the intersection with the linear constraints and then so then we encode the linear constraints in the definition by making uh, the augmented complex on the S uh, a template, normal template compl uh, complex on the together with some intervals on the that in fact will encode the directions of the state that we want to make interse intersection with in order to. The, okay, so that is the, uh, this idea is to handle all this uh, um, for interse intersection uh, uh, operation. And now to uh, we move to the uh, some application. In fact, the application motivated uh, all this uh, uh, research. So f we want to do the stability of to verify the stability of networked control system. So here we have um, here is the only a simple example, and then uh, the previous talk uh, already gave some like uh, um, basics about uh, the. Uh, networked control system that we will see that here for example here is only uh, one simple example is we have only one dynamics and then we will use we sample the system and then at the sample times we can update the controls so and then here so we don't see the control system but th this is the simple uh, example simple ver uh, um, versions of the of this uh, system so then we will have the sample system here. Uh, we have sampling here. And then we the sampling, but the sampling period is not fixed. It's uncertain. So it's, we have here, the sampling period is between some uh, bounds, so like mean and max. And also, when we sample, we can update the state of the system. We can make a jump. So it's exactly the we can see that as the update of the control. Okay, so and that is the pretty uh, general uh, system uh, that we can uh, model using this formalism. So this is the uh, called nearly periodic linear impulsive system. Impulsive because we can make this uh, 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 jump at the some discrete time points. So now here's the stability problems that we want to uh, handle. So our stability problem here is the global exponential st stability. So basically is that if we look at the um, uh, discrete time system, so then we so suppose that we start with some initial state and then we would like some uh, convergence uh, with the, um, the rate lambda. So then we want the system to to move towards the origin, closer and closer. So basically, in order to uh, verify this stability property, we can use some uh, um, uh, set contraction operations. So that means that it's a, it's a different way to look at the stability. So suppose that we have, we will consider the C set. C set is simply the set that uh, can contain the origin uh, in, in, in the case of linear system, the equilibrium. So then we consider that what is the, 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 the conditions, sufficient and necessary uh, conditions for the stability, the global exponential stability here is that there exists a contractive C set. So simply the now we, instead of uh, trying to look at the uh, uh, trying to find the Lyapunov function is very clo uh, closely related, but it's a different perspective. It's more set uh, analysis. Is that we would try to find a set containing the origin, so that this set is contractive after some point. Okay, so that, it, that means that we can use the reachability analysis to verify this condition. That means that we start with some initial set. We let the system flow until we get the convergence of the reachable set. Then that is the proof of stability. Okay, so the idea here now is that we want to have a contractive, find a contractive C set for our system. And this can be applied to not only linear system, switch linear system, any system that we, we uh, are able to, have to compute the reachable set. 
and especially check the rich bassette and the set contraction. So the idea is that now we will uh, have two stages uh, in our uh, algorithm. First of all, we will try to, because we want to now to find the contractive C set in form of complex sonoto. Our complex sonoto can capture the A construction. So that is a already a very good indications that we will be efficient in finding a C, uh, C set, contractive C set. So the two stages, first of all, we we synthesize a candidate complex sonotopes using all the Aiken uh, structure information. So that means that taking the Aiken vectors of our dynamics in the system, different dynamics, and also the, all the constraints in uh, our system uh, to define our uh, complex sonotopes. And then we synthesize in the sense that we will synthesize the scaling factors so that will uh, satisfy the contraction condition. So uh, here is the, uh, the, the more uh, details of the procedure is that in order to, because we, we see that the sampling period is between, is inside some interval. Now suppose that we want to prove the stability for uh, all the sampling uh, period inside this uh, interval, then what we do is that we will discrete times this interval into uh, uh, different smaller intervals in order, simply in order to increase the chance of uh, is to reduce the, um, the approximation errors because uh, in all our operations we need uh, approximation. So then we would try to prove the stability for each small interval. And then we will uh, prove the stability for the whole interval. Uh, is, it, is this time is up? So now let's just finish this. So uh, here is some benchmarks on the network control system. So we, here we have some uh, benchmark, especially we compared with a, some standard tool, uh, NCS, for the uh, stability of network control system. So uh, for example, uh, if we, um, we try to find the upper bound on the transmission period uh, so that the system is the uh, globally exponential st uh, stable, so then we can see that with our um, uh, template complex zonotope, we can find much larger upper bound on the, this transmission period, which is not exactly the sampling period, but it's closely related and uh, uh, we can uh, model it using the um, impulses uh, system. So a uh, different um, application that we consider that like a direct application of this uh, set uh, representation is the verifications of linear invariance properties. So linear invariance here is that we would like, we have some uh, uh, set defined by uh, linear constraint that we want the system to stay there, to find, we want, in fact, we want to find uh, invariance of our system and now our system is hybrid and affine, that means that we have the linear dynamics together with the guards and uh, staying conditions are dynamics. And uh, what I want to simply, we have some operations and uh, we, uh, we already discussed uh, basic ideas of the uh, properties. So, so then, for example, here, the, the, the idea is that we need to define our te uh, the, the templates, that means that the generators for our complex sonotopes. So one idea is that just taking the eigenvectors from all the matrices in the system and also the, the guards and the same conditions. And also we can uh, guess more templates, like for example, taking the orthogonal projections on the new space of the, of the guards and staying conditions. And also any information, addition uh, information that we obtain from, for example, simulation results, then we can uh, use to define our templates. So maybe I will not uh, uh, use up uh, your time too much. So basically, we uh, uh, we have tested our uh, procedures uh, with uh, uh, a number of benchmarks from the Arch workshop. So it's uh, this uh, workshop uh, um, 
um, provides uh, a number of benchmarks in the for the hardware system verification and testing um, community. So then, with this example, we uh, we can uh, see that so the complexity of the also that we see the also the complexity of the current uh, state of the art of uh, hardware system uh, verification uh, tools. So we have nine dimension, one location, and uh, uh, it's a self. Uh, self loops, so we have uh, nine uh, transitions, and so basically uh, we compared with uh, um, SpaceX, and then we uh, obtained some uh, uh, better uh, results. For example, uh, with the uh, SpaceX cannot handle uh, some uh, examples, and then uh, this uh, uh, new uh, set representation can handle. And also we have another example, which is the uh, networked vehicle platoon. So the, in the case that with the communication, when we drop the communication, then we have some uh, here, for example, then, uh, we, uh, then we have some time to re-establish the communication, and then call it the real time, and then we want to see whether another system is stable. And, uh, uh, and stable and a uh, no collision, and then also we uh, uh, we can uh, we show that uh, with some previous results using the uh, real zonotope, that means the, the usual zonotope, then we will op uh, obtain some positive results. And then the reason behind this is that the the eigen structures of these uh, uh, models of this uh, linear dynamics in the models are complex, so they. That's why the complex zonotope can be very efficient. So uh, now here is some to some details if we want more about it. especially is the uh, everything is included in the thesis of my pretty fresh thesis. Any questions? That's good for me. I have a question. Yes. Uh, I had not come across the paper on platooning, the benchmark on platooning. Ah. So you mentioned uh, there's a paper by yes. McClough. Ah, yes, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, in, the, uh, in the... In the ARC, um, yes. in one of the Arch. benchmark suites. OK. So I... That that system is not is probably not probabilistic. No, no, no. Yeah. No. So how do they model the communications? That that would be, it would be very interesting if you can. Uh, it's uh, it's not about the communication. It's uh, simply that okay, if we um, miss the communication, the system will switch to some mode, and then there is a time between. Uh, switching, this switching. So there's a kind of a non-deterministic event Purely where okay, the message yeah. comes in or right. it doesn't come in. Yes. And if it doesn't come in, then we have... Some kind of communication failure okay. mode. Yes. And then we have to handle that. Yes, and then uh, we, it's based on the, the jump time. That means that fast between the fast switching or okay. slow switching. Oh. Yes. Oh, so it's, it's, uh, it's interesting to have something like that as a benchmark to yeah, yes. uh, see what can be done. And also maybe to find out if it could be a good fit for some practical situations. Yeah, yes. uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it was developed uh, in real cooperation, so that was planned to run on a, some, I do not know whether it's simulation. It was also verified in Chimera. Okay. So then it was submitted to <coughs> challenge also the reachability. So first it was developed, uh, first it was verified in Chimera, and then <coughs> yeah, yeah, so used the for each other. Yeah, so all these benchmarks somehow analyzed, somehow to, to some degree, hmm. by, uh, by, the, by the people who developed the benchmarks. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's, and then, so then we, have, uh, we can have some results to compare with. Yes. Oh, very cool. May I also ask something? So this annotated... Uh, version of the state set representation. Is it something like uh, the um, support function representation that you just remember what you should do without doing it? Um, 
it's, it's and once you need the result, you compute it only for... No, no, no. It's, uh, yeah, it's uh, not that support function. It's not so symbolic. Somehow you have the generators. It's like zonotopes, purely like zonotopes. Mm -hmm. The support function is like you compute some uh, symbolic, symbolic functions. And then when we want to know about the information on one direction, you uh, provide. But here it's a... Uh, uh, everything is captured with the generators. When we want to do the, the, the operations, then we need to play with that. Uh, it's, uh, it's less algebraic than the support mm -hmm. function. Mm -hmm. It's uh, somehow we need to handle, you need to, op uh, to do optimization and the uh, intuition, geometric intuition is important. Mm -hmm. And what is positive you mean? Positive invariant? Positive invariant is that for example, when you apply the dynamics, suppose that, for example, it's, uh, 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 in some cases, for example, you have the dynamics which is a, a center dynamics, uh, that circle. It will make the circle as the reachable set, for mm -hmm. example. If you take a, 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 a polytope, the, then you apply the dynamics, each time it will change. Mm -hmm. So you will never have a polytopic invariance, mm -hmm. positive invariance for that dynamics. But what does positive mean? Because Pos invariant itself means that if you start in it, then you remain in it. Yes. So what is the difference between invariant and it positive? It's, a it's a to say the, the, the directions. So in the dynamic system, there is also positive to say that you go forward, you not know, inverse uh, in the ah, dynamic system. Forward reachability instead for, uh, of backward, backward yes, yes, I yes. see, I see, I see. Thank you. Very good. Other questions? So when you compute the intersections uh, with uh, these uh, zone tops, it's still mm -hmm. not exact, and you have to over approximate. Yeah, yes, uh, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Is the uh, over approximation? Over approximation. Okay, okay, so uh, what is? Uh, <coughs> uh, I didn't have time to elaborate, <laughs> but it's to say that our approach for verification approach here is not. Um, it's more. It's, uh, it's more like an invariance uh, com computation. That means that we don't compute step by step. We don't go through the step and then switches after switches. It's that we want to find the invariant set that will satisfy that the condition that under the dynamics continues together with the switching, it will be an invariant. So that's why the intersection is implicit. It's we, it's, you don't have the accumulation of the errors. Hmm. Okay. But what is important is that we need to find a very good, uh, to guess a very good shape hmm. of this uh, Set. That is the, the challenge. It's like uh, the challenge in all the approaches using templates. Okay. And this is uh, sort of related to an optimization problem, finding this. Uh, yes, well, so we defined uh, all the constraints of the invariance under the dynamics, and then we do a lot of relaxation. Hmm. So, uh, of course, uh, maintaining some accuracy. Yes. So, so, one interesting point about how accurate. How, how big is the over approximation? Uh, there were some results on the networked control example, mm -hmm. and you had a table yes, yes. Uh, from prior work. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there it's clear that the bounds that um, are produced here are much more accurate than all of the, the two previous yes, works. Yes, yes. Um, because the, the, the explanation is that it's, uh, we can, for this type of a system, especially for the types of properties, the contraction, stabilities, and all that, then it's a, the, the, the idea, uh, the, the, the static set, the initial set is very important. If we have a good initial set that capture already all the contraction direction, then we need few iterations to converge. Otherwise, we will need to go a lot and then accumulate errors, and then maybe uh, we'll fail because of the errors. Any other questions? Thank you very much, Tao.